Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you how to create some terrifyingly easy Halloween designs in Adobe Illustrator. Let's head onto the computer now and get started. Okay so we're here in Illustrator and as usual guys before we start be sure to download the free template file that we're working from here from the link in the description below. You can download this exact same file and work along from home along with us and you're welcome to also use these illustrations that we've created for any of your designs as well. So these are the examples of the kind of thing we're going to be creating today. Very simple vector illustrations here that you could be using. You could create stickers from these, you could use them in a poster design, really anything and they're all fairly straightforward to do. This is the artboard we're going to be working on and the only thing we've got in here is our text that we've already started. Now if you haven't already checked out our other video on creating some spooky Halloween text do check that out first as in that video we're going to cover the first stages of creating text like this. So this is just a simple sans serif font that we've manipulated and given it some rough edges and slightly warped. Now this is just basically a continuation of that video. It's just a another technique to create this dripping blood effect text that we have over on the left hand artboard and we're going to be using the warp tool to do that. So it can be found over on the left hand side under the width tool and it's the second option down. You can see the shortcut is shift and R on your keyboard. So we're going to select this and by default the size of this warp tool is going to be too big and how it works is if I just click and drag you can see we can start manipulating the text, pulling it off in different directions. It's the the same as a liquify tool which you may be more familiar with in things like Photoshop but I can double click on the tool and we can get up our settings. I'm going to change the intensity. I'm actually going to bump this up to about 60% but I'm going to change our width and height. We'll try 10 pixels each for now. I'm just going to zoom in a touch and similar to the other video that we looked at for creating the spooky Halloween text we're just wanting to create these droplet effects like something's dripping off the text so all I'm doing here is just clicking and dragging down and you can see this is already just going to pull sections of the text down. I can do it to the same area twice to sort of elongate it slightly. I'm just going to keep doing this until we get the desired effect. It's really quite an effective way to do this kind of thing and it means we don't have to merge anything as well afterwards. It's all doing this live to the text. You can see the actual paths of the text are changing when we are clicking and dragging. So I'm just going to speed through this. It's the same process all the way along. You can also do things like on the edge of the text just pull it out slightly to denote drops running down the edge as well. Okay, so that should do it for this example. We can always change the color to a red just to give it a slightly more blood-like look. Moving on, we're going to create these simple bat icons and this is another very simple technique. All I'm going to do here is grab my pen tool. Just clicking an anchor point, you can see we get our preview path here and I'm just going to create a slightly diagonal line like this and then I'm going to bring it back over and this is going to make the basis of the left hand wing here. Here. So I'm just going to go with something like this. Press escape. I'm going to flip this to a stroke instead of a fill. Give this a little bit more width and I'm actually going to give it curved caps and corners. Change the stroke color to black. Now zooming in I'm going to press plus on my keyboard and that's just going to select the add anchor point tool. And I just want to plot two lines across the first portion of the path that we created here. So trying to make each section as equal as possible. Well, it doesn't really matter. It can be quite rough this. I'm just going to go with something like that. Then I'm going to grab the curvature tool and this is the easiest way I've found to easily create curves between anchor points like this. So I'm just going to click in the middle of our first two anchor points and then clicking and dragging up I can create a curved path now. And then I'm just going to do this between each of the other points. Curve the path coming back the other way up and then the opposite direction down and we have one half of the bat wing now. What I can do now is grab my reflect tool so it can be found under the rotate tool or the shortcut is O on your keyboard and holding option on a Mac or alt on a PC I can just click on one of the right hand anchor points so if I just hold option and click we get a dialog box popping up and I'm just going to click copy and that's going to perfectly reflect it along that axis. Now I can always click and 
drag over these, use my pathfinder options to unite these two. Now to create the head of the bat, I'm just going to grab our ellipse tool and from the center point, holding option again or alt on a PC, I'm just going to drag out a kind of oval shape here, maybe something like that. Bump it up a touch with my arrow keys. Now I'm going to grab the polygon tool, clicking and dragging and then pressing down on my arrow keys, I can change this to a triangle and I'll just hold shift to lock this to a perfect triangle here. I'm going to use the same technique with the curvature tool, clicking in between the paths on the left and right hand side, I'm just going to curve these slightly, it doesn't have to be perfectly balanced, it can be fairly rough. And I'm just going to rotate this now, bring it down, maybe make them a touch smaller. And then I'm just going to hold my option key again, alt on a PC and shift and I'm just going to click and drag and that's going to drag out a duplicate. I can go over to my properties panel and reflect this along the horizontal axis and that's just going to reflect it like so. And then I'm going to select the other one and group this, so command G and then clicking and dragging over all of our objects here, I'm just going to align them to the center so they're all perfectly aligned. And now if I click and drag them again and use the unite option, we have our bat symbol. I can always add a black fill to this and it's that simple. Okay, moving on, we are going to create a pumpkin. So I'm going to start with an ellipse again. So grab the ellipse tool, just going to drag out another sort of oval shape here. And I'm just going to change the fill color to orange. Okay, I'm now going to click on the pen tool and grab our anchor point tool. And I'm just going to stretch out the curves at the top and bottom of this oval a little bit more. So clicking on the top anchor point and dragging, I'm going to hold shift as well to lock this to a horizontal plane. I'm just going to drag this out a little bit more. This is going to help with the overall shape of this. I'm going to do the same on the bottom. So we'll go something like that. I'm also going to make sure that our stroke effect is set to align to the outside. So I'm just going to click this option and that's for adding the shadows and highlights. It just makes it a bit easier. To add the shadows and highlights, I'm just going to copy this. So command C and then paste in front is command F or control C and control F on a PC. Then holding option or Alt, clicking and dragging, I'm just going to offset this copy. I'm going to scale up just a tiny bit and I'm going to create the highlight area. So we'll go something like that. Select our originally duplicated oval and use the Pathfinder minus front option. So we're just left with this sliver and I'm going to take the stroke off it. I'll double click on my color fill and just select a slightly lighter hue here. Click OK and that will do. What I can do now is with everything selected, again holding Alt or Option, clicking and dragging and I hold Shift as well to lock it to that horizontal plane. Then I want to send all of this to the back so I can right click, go to Arrange and send to back and now I'm just going to scale this down slightly just from the bottom go with something like that and then I want to do that exact same process again so holding option clicking and dragging send to back so the shortcut for send to back as well is shift command and the left bracket and again I'm just going to scale this down some more I'll bump this in a touch as well okay so that will do for one half of our pumpkin here now what I can do is select all of this again grab my reflect tool and then then holding option I want to click on one of the center points of our original oval such as here I can preview this as well that's going to reflect perfectly along that axis click copy so I'm just going to delete the top oval here so I want to leave this highlighted area as we're going to change that to a shadow so I'm just going to press delete and I want to click and drag over the right two ovals and highlights and send them to the back so again shift command left bracket and we now have the basis of our pumpkin shape. Let's grab the highlight areas and again I'm just going to double click into our color picker and now select a darker shade of orange and it just gives our design a little bit of depth. Now lastly I'm just going to grab my curvature tool and just clicking roughly in the center I'm going to take it slightly below the top of the pumpkin. I'm just going to click once, click again and then click once more and that's just going to create a simple curved line. Press escape, press V on my keyboard for my selection tool. I'm going to flip the fill to a stroke and then make this black and bump the stroke weight up 
something like that. And then going to grab the width tool. So if you remember, that's actually sitting above our warp tool that we used initially. So we can grab that, the shortcut is Shift W. And I'm just going to go to the bottom anchor point and click and drag and make this slightly wider. And that's just going to make the bottom of this stroke wider than the top, which will work well for this effect. I'm gonna select it and send it to the back. So Shift Command, left bracket, and we basically have our pumpkin now. Now it's fairly easy to add some carvings into this. I'm just going to use some simple triangles here. So again, with the polygon tool, it's remembered that we used a triangle last time. I can press I on my keyboard for my eyedropper tool and I'll select the same orange fill. We'll maybe go for something a bit lighter for the inside. We'll go with this lighter orange. It's not hugely important. Again, I can create an offset area by copying this. So Command C, Command F, and then Option or Alt. I'm just gonna click and drag this off to make a duplicate. Select our other shape and press the minus front option. And then I'm going to get rid of the stroke and make this a slightly lighter shade again. Or I could go a slightly darker shade in fact, create more of a shadow. Now I'm just going to group this together. So Command G to group and I can start placing these. And I'm just holding Option to make a duplicate here. I can reflect this via my properties panel. Again, I'll group these together just for aligning this. I'm going to group all of the actual pumpkin shape as well, center this up. Now, an easy way to create a jagged mouth is if I grab my ellipse tool, I'm just gonna drag out a rough oval again, and then holding option and shift, I'm just gonna drag out a copy here and make this one slightly taller, slightly thinner here. Holding option when I do this, so it's scaling from the middle. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip this to a stroke instead, just so I can see the rough shape that we're creating. Pump this down a bit, I think that'll do. So I'm gonna select all of this, then grab my shape builder tool on the left hand side and holding option, I'm just going to click and drag over the areas I don't want. So we're just left with this. What I'm now going to do though, is grab my direct selection tool, click and drag over the bottom anchor point, press command X or control X to cut this away and then command F or control F to paste it back in place. And then I'm just going to move our top line up slightly. I'm gonna select both of them and then go to effect, distort and transform, and then zigzag. Now, if I click preview, this is gonna look a bit crazy to begin with. We're gonna keep the corner option, but I'm just gonna bump the size of it down a touch. I want this to be a little bit more subtle. And I might add a few more ridges per segment in here. So I'll maybe go with six for this example. Maybe take this down to four, click okay. Now I want to go to object, Experience expand appearance and that just means our path line is actually going to match the effect we've just created and with my direct selection tool I'm actually just going to delete the left and right anchor points of our top line here and then still with the direct selection tool I'm just going to join up the two end points if I click and drag over both of them and press command J or control J that's going to join them up do the same on the other side here okay we have our mouth cut out what I'm going to do again it's just with I on my keyboard, select the eyedropper tool and we're just going to match the fill and stroke styles of the other cutouts. Again, I'll press Command C and Command F, and then Shift and Option, dragging up to create a duplicate. Again, we'll select both, press the minus front option, and then again with my eyedropper, I'm going to select our inner offset area, and that's just going to give this a little bit of depth as well. And then I can simply place this on top, group it together, select everything, and center it. And there we have our Halloween pumpkin. Okay, so last but not least, we have a spider web and spider illustration. So the spider web is actually very easy to create. We're going to grab the polygon tool here. Again, clicking and dragging. You can see we've still got our triangle, but I'm going to press up on my arrows on my keyboard and give this a few more sides here. You can really take this as far as you want. It depends how kind of detailed you want this. We'll go with something like that. Release. I'm going to get rid of the fill color. Okay, so next I'm going to go up to Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Pucker and Bloat. Drag this down, click Preview, and nothing's going to change because we don't have any kind of percentage here. Now I want to take this into a minus percentage, and you can see this is puckering this polygon, so the paths between each anchor point are now being sort of pulled in the way, and it's giving this nice effect that we're after. Let me go with minus 8%, click OK. Again, I'm going to go 
go to Object, Expand Appearance so that the path line matches our effect. I'm going to press Command C and Command F to make a duplicate and then holding Shift and Option, scaling this right down until we've got a much smaller version. Now I'm going to select both of them, go up to Object, Blend, Make and then if I double click on our Blend tool over on the left hand side, you can click Preview, go to Specified Steps and we can bump this up, maybe go with seven steps, click OK. Again, I'm gonna to go to Object and Expand, click OK, and now we have each of our blended steps as a path line. And now it's just a case of grabbing my line tool and going from each side to the other. So I can actually just click and drag one line here and then grab my rotate tool. So where we have the reflect tool, go back up to rotate. So just R on your keyboard, press enter as the center point is already where we want it. And with my preview checked, you can see I can just bump up this value. And depending on how many steps are in your polygon to begin with, it's going to be 30 degrees for how many sides we have here. And I'm just going to click the copy option. And then I can simply press command D or control D on a PC and this is just going to fill in the rest and there we now have our spider web. Lastly we want to make our spider. This is another fairly simple technique. We're just going to start with a couple of ellipses. So holding shift I'm going to create some perfect circles here. Okay so I just want to duplicate this so again option or alt clicking and dragging. I'll hold shift again and we've got our duplicate and I'm going to make this one slightly bigger. Again just holding shift to lock the aspect ratio. Go something like that. And then with my pen tool, I'm just going to click within our original circle and drag out a path here. Click again. We don't want the first section of this path to be too long. We'll go something like that and take this back. Press escape. I'm actually going to grab my selection tool, select this, flip this to a stroke. I'm going to give this rounded caps and corners again and I'm going to bump the stroke weight up as well. And we're going to repeat this process with the pen tool to create the rest of of the legs. Press escape at the end of each path and then just click again for your new path like so. And then I'm just going to create a, a small sort of pincer. So just the same technique here, just a much shorter version of what we've just done. Go something like that, zoom in. And I'm actually going to use my width tool again just to slightly taper the inner part of that pincer like so. All I'm going to do now is select the legs and the pincer, deselect the circles and I'm just going to press option and shift just to drag out some duplicates. Again I'll flip these along the horizontal axis via our properties panel, drag them back in and don't worry they won't be perfectly aligned, I'll just click and drag over all of it. Again deselect our circles, I'm going to group all of the legs and pincers. Now I can select all of it and make sure it's all centered up nicely and we have our spider. I might actually just click and drag over this and slightly skew it in a bit. I think that will just give it a slightly more realistic look. And I'm also going to double click and grab our pincers and just generally take the stroke weight down a touch. And there we have it. Some easy Halloween illustrations for you to try. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed learning these very simple techniques to create some interesting looking Halloween designs in Illustrator. If you have any questions at all, do let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, remember to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more weekly content. If you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.